the videos we have it in our YouTube uh, uh, channel. Please visit our YouTube channel and there you, find, you can find all the previous videos of our Agile series. Uh, many eminent speakers uh, who gave very good lectures on the Agile uh, methodology. So you can go ahead and uh, find those details there and also our flagship model of uh, Agile conference uh, that happened in January. Uh, that was also there, so you can find out uh, from there, from our uh, YouTube channel. And today's webinar is by Vinay Kumar Tarala, uh, an Agile coach on the Spotify model for scaling Agile. So Vinay, uh, Vinay, Vinay is an Agile coach and also our uh, board member for memberships. He has uh, 14 plus years of experience in uh, both traditional as well as Agile project management. Uh, he's worked in aerospace, healthcare and finance industry. He's also a director of membership of uh, PMI Pearl City chapter, and he has all the credentials and uh, very good knowledge on Agile methodology. Right now, he's working on Spotify model in one of the companies, and hence he's taking this uh, uh, opportunity to give his knowledge and experience on the Spotify model, which is one of the famous and uh, uh, helpful for scaling Agile. So, with a no further ado, I request Vinay to take the dias and uh, give us details on the Spotify model. Thank you. Sure. Uh, thank you, Gokul. Thank you very much. And good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joined from. And thank you, Gokul, for that introduction. And uh, as we all know, Agile Series 1, uh, last year, uh, we have the uh, you know, we conducted around nine to ten sections, uh, which we got good response, uh, which we did a precursor for our Agile conference. Uh, like Gokul said, uh, in January we, we had the Agile conference. We had a successful virtual conference. Uh, the recording is available in our uh, chapter YouTube channel. And if, if you are not attended that conference, please go to that uh, videos. We have got very good uh, line of speakers uh, who targeted the team sustaining business agility. And uh, really, we have good amount of key takeaways from the conference. And in continuation of that, uh, I will present uh, Komal Mathur. Uh, she she uh, uh, you know, requested us to continue that journey. And as we promised, we have come back with the Agile series too. And this time it will be a monthly based as Gokul said. Uh, so we'll be uh, you know, uh, taking a next level of concepts uh, when compared to series one. And we are looking for uh, experienced Agile coaches who can share their uh, knowledge on the interesting happenings in the Agile world. So at the end of the day, we want to contribute to our members in Agile front as much as possible. Okay, so let's get on to the topic, the Spotify model for scaling Agile. So before, before I jump into the topic, uh, so uh, we have in series one, uh, we have covered uh, very basic topics from you know, traditional project management versus uh, you know, Agile project management, and then uh, uh, you know, uh, Scrum framework, Kanban, and uh, scaling uh, frameworks like SAFE, Discipline Agile, and uh, now in this series, as I said, we want to take it to the next level. And in that thought process, we were looking for good, interesting topics. And uh, this was the uh, topic we, as a uh, you know, team, we have discussed and come forward uh, to share with the you know, uh, members of the chapter. Okay. So, what is Spotify model? Does anybody know? Can Can I uh, get some yes or no in the chat? Is any anybody in the call know about little bit or heard about Spotify model? No, okay, no, no. Then it's uh, I see quite a few no's there. I see, yeah, it's a good opportunity for you to you know know about it. So it's it's very difficult to cover in in fifteen minutes of time uh, about entire model, but I'll try to give the glimpses and important aspects of the model, uh, Spotify model. 
okay so most of us know about uh, spotify right uh, the, the music app like amazon music or you know, other music okay so spotify is a music uh, uh, application uh, in most of our phones we have so they have used the, this uh, model uh, the agile model in the company that's where the origin of uh, you know spotify model so, so Spotify model is resonates for you know autonomy, communication, accountability, and quality. Okay, in the market we have different types of scaling models of agile. Okay, the Spotify model is one of the uh, scaling agile uh, model, and this is a model again. I'm stressing on the point. This is a model. Like Safe is a framework. Scrum is a framework. Okay. This is a uh, you know, uh, it's a model. What is this model, and uh, what are the uh, uh, you know, advantages and key difference from the other frameworks and methodologies? We'll try to decode in this webinar. Okay, and with this Spotify model, Spotify has uh, you know achieved more uh, innovation, more product productivity because they focused on the culture, they focused on the autonomy, they focused on the communication. They focus on the accountability. So by the end of the day, they could able to successfully deliver what customer uh, they are looking for. Okay, and the major problem in the in the in the uh, big enterprises or big organizations is like you know when you have Scrum, Kanban, Lean uh, in the in the uh, agile world. You see, take it as agile as umbrella. We have different methodologies like you know Scrum, Safe. Uh, you know, Kanban, Lean, Discipline, Agile. So, not uh, 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 entire organization will uh, suit for only one framework. That's where Spotify has successfully uh, uh, able to penetrate and uh, you know yield the benefits. Here, the Spotify model, what they say is, choose your framework uh, according to your context. Okay, if, if, if you see here. Either it's a Scrum, it's a Kanban, or it's a combination of Scrum and uh, uh, Kanban, like Scrum Ban, or it's, a, it's where Scrum is predominantly in Scrum Ban. And uh, like yeah, I've seen in some cases where Kanban is predominant, which we'll call Can Scrum. So they have not stressed on one single framework like Scrum. Although Scrum is very popular framework, uh, there is an you know recommendation. So again, I I use cautionly word recommendation. Like Scrum is meant for development work where they will get the minimum uh, well, uh, viable product, and Kanban is uh, you know predominantly used for service industry or operations where teams are working on the tickets, production incidents, and all right. So when you look at the big organization, we have all sort of teams. Like you know some teams. Uh, working in uh, product-based development uh, style and some teams, operations and uh, services. So that's where Spotify said you choose your frame, uh, uh, you know, framework based on your context of the team. Like if you're working on the product, go for Scrum. If you're working on the service, go for the Kanban or it's a combination, use a Scrum. Band. So that's a unique you know, point I would say as an agile coach, uh, when I say the what is the where the Spotify model is originating from and what is its advantages, or how can it differentiate with the other scaling uh, frameworks in the market. So, this is the crux. And there are few companies they have uh, successfully implemented uh, Spotify itself, a, a, a company, right? Uh, they have successfully. Uh, implemented the, uh, this one and they call it as a Spotify model and some companies like Jensa, Fidelity, DBS, they have ins taken inspiration from this model and they have tried to uh, uh, implement this model in their uh, context and in their organization and benefited you know, the results in terms of uh, faster delivery, in terms of uh, you know, the high quality, in terms of uh, better customer satisfaction and all. That's a, that's a little bit of introduction about the uh, uh, Spotify model. Okay, I'll, I'll take up the questions uh, at the end. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, keep uh, uh, typing in the chat so that at the end of the session, we'll go to the uh, uh, questions. Maybe you can use the Q&A uh, option here in the uh, Webex where I can directly go to the Q&A and look for the questions. Okay.
and uh, there's a small introduction about this spotify like who, who uh, don't know about this spotify it's a music app as i said in the introduction they are founded in april 23 20, 2006 and uh, daniel Ek and martin uh Lawrence is uh, their uh, you know, founders it's a little bit about uh, spotify uh, and this uh, uh, Spotify model came into the surface in 2012 where uh, their engineers, uh, you know, Henrik Nieberg and Handa Riversan published the white paper to the world. That's the first time they have introduced the Spotify model to the world. And they have, they have published the white paper. In that white paper, what they have done is, whatever they have implemented in the uh, inside Spotify and what they have achieved, they have uh, published in that white paper. So according to that white paper and a couple of videos, which I will share with you uh, uh, at the end of the session, that white paper and the, those two videos by Henry uh, Knieberg hold still good and still many of the people will go and refer those videos, what they have achieved and how they have you know, uh, implemented uh, this uh, model. If, if you see here in this uh, right side picture, that itself depicts the Spotify model. We will decode that as we move on. Like, you know, uh, pod, squad, chapter, tribe, guild, all these uh, terminologies we will uh, see going forward. So, as I said in the introduction, one framework does not fit for all the teams. Like, you know, uh, we have I have told enough on the uh, why a particular team has to choose a one framework uh, in their context based on the product or development work they go for scrum based on the operations or tickets or you know service uh, type of work they'll go for kanban if they are doing combination of that they'll go for scrum and in in some cases they'll use a, a scaled agile framework so this spotify model is agnostic to all the frameworks like you know in any framework you can implement this model that is the beauty of this model okay and if you look at this uh, the scrum master role and the practices and the principles the servant uh, the the uh, the other parameters here they were saying uh, the the practices uh, are uh, principles are greater than practices you, you need not to stick to the particular practices like the scrum practices or kanban practices the, the overall the agile mindset and agile principles uh, should play a bigger role okay and uh, if you see the 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 uh, uh, scrum master role itself that by definition uh, most of the people say master okay master is someone who, who holds the stick and you know tells the team to do that this and do some moral scrum policing something some sort of like that so that gives a little bit of negative thoughts to the uh, the, uh, uh, the teams on the ground that's their observation and then they they, they stressed upon servant leadership uh, uh, or uh, you know over the mastering something okay and in, in fact lately scrum uh, scrum guide also acknowledged uh, from the beginning they have uh, you know saying that servant leadership is the key for the scrum master okay so in this uh, you know, uh, model they have pretty much openly said that whatever framework you follow that should not be religious to one framework it should be based on the, your context and uh, at the end of the day your deliverables matters okay so as we saw we saw in this uh, big picture you know, i would call it as a big picture here uh, the entire uh, teams the, here the smallest team they are called a squad and then uh, uh, all these uh, squads they are tagged with product owner and the, uh, the other uh, team members and then multiple squads will become tribe and this tribe uh, uh we have the chapters here what are the chapters the chapters are the group of people with the same set of skill set okay we will decode what exactly it means okay and guild is a wider community across the tribes okay so let us look at the each of the element or each of the uh, you know, names in details so what is squad squad is is as similar as scrum team 
but they are working in the scrum framework so squad is depending upon their context they will be working in their uh, 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 framework okay the basic uh, smallest unit which they will deliver the value to the customer directly okay they, they always have this so there is a great difference between the startup and the organizations right so they, they 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 have the culture of you know we are like a mini startup when 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 you have that culture you will have more focus on the innovation more on the experimentation and uh, more of uh, uh, the autonomy so these all the things we will discuss how spotify brought these elements into the model and how they have successful success obviously pods are uh, squads are uh, self organization they are self self organizing they are cross functional and typically they have the five to seven engineers and uh, and they are stable you know, like this is one of the important point they are stable not frequently we will change the team members in the squad obviously it is been uh, uh, you know helped by the product owner and how about scrum master we have agile coaches here okay so if you see here uh, agile coaches they they they, they made a redundant of the scrum master role and they are, uh, they have kept focus on agile coach so again these agile coaches are not full time uh, uh, member of that squad so they will be for two two three teams they will be having one agile coach okay so this is where the, the spotify model is coming from and as i said they stress upon the point on autonomy okay what is that autonomy autonomy is it's like you know the the freeness of the team or the the squad or the how independent they are how independent they can easily able to take the decisions and what to build how to build and you know all these things lies within the squad not somebody coming from the outside or the product owner insisting them okay of course they have a boundary like with their uh, squad mission and uh, product strategy they always have, always have short term goals in the form of iteration goals every iteration they work on goals and uh, uh, deliver the value incrementally incrementally and iteratively to the customer okay and this is one of the important uh, key difference between the other frameworks and methodology in the market squared area we see it here in this picture this entire squad is sitting at once okay and so this picture is way back in 2012 and 2014 post corona things have changed but that's a different another discussion but if you see here what they have tried to do is like they have sit together and if you see the walls every wall is a white board here okay and uh, when whenever they have some uh, team event like iteration planning iteration retrospection iteration review they will do it together here and they have open board and they will be uh, posting the information uh, to bring the transparency into the picture and uh, whenever they need to discuss more uh, technical details and you know more uh, uh, you know separate discussion needed they will go to the inside the room this is the room back side of that meeting room is there so they they use it very rarely depending upon the situation and the criticality but everything is transparent whoever works on what they they know completely and and uh, whatever uh, you know success or failures they will share it uh, we will see how how they share it and how they celebrate here in the spotify they celebrate the failures and they, in fact they have a friday night uh, weekend party to celebrate that failure you will see that how they do that and what is the motivation behind that we will see okay as i said autonomy obviously when you when you have autonomy in the team you will have more accountability with the team and they are they are more you know um, feel more confident and they have more collective ownership they'll work uh, for a purpose and they'll have more collaboration within the uh, squad and then they'll you'll be having uh, you know little bit more motivated people when compared to the other people uh, you know who, uh, when compared people working in the squad you have better motivated people because they know their purpose they know their goals they always open and they always collaborate and these things will helping them to build better products in a faster cycle time and 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 decisions uh, uh, most of the times uh, you know uh, most of the decisions are kept in within the within the leaders 
and in fact the other uh, framework scaled agile framework also safe also talks about the centralized and decentralized decision making so the, this this type of uh, 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 you know uh, culture will uh, enable to uh, this, uh, this square to take the decisions by themselves, not relying on the product owner, a scrum master, or C, C, C level leadership. Okay, so th that's the crux of the autonomous squad, uh, squads. They, 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 you know, they be autonomous and they don't support optimize. And they uh, then easily, whenever they need something, they easily go to the uh, neighboring squads for the help and they. they they will be successful in what they are doing. Squads are loosely coupled and tightly aligned squads. Okay, so there are you have very less constraints to them, and uh, but they are tightly aligned with the purpose and the goals. Okay, so this is the one of the Klimberg uh, 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 autonomy mo motivation uh, graph. If you see it on the x-axis, autonomy and y-axis alignment. Okay, when there is no uh, low uh, autonomy and uh, low alignment, you don't know people where they are going, what they are working. Okay, you have a lot of uh, confusion and uh, uh, there is there is no uh, purpose. And when there is more alignment and there is no autonomy and you have tightly uh, uh, tied up with the constraints, uh, we, we don't yield that expected results. Likewise, for the more autonomy and there is no alignment, you have less constraints, but they don't have the alignment like on what they are working, what is their purpose, what is their mission, vision. If you don't have that common alignment, again, this more autonomy will not yield expected results. So it is a combination of autonomy and alignment is what we you uh, know, uh, enables the uh, you know squads to perform better and deliver better products. Okay, so alignment enables autonomy. They go hand by hand. Okay, and so this was the one of the uh, uh, example where Spotify model, you know, differentiated from other frameworks and methodology. This was the e email from the CEO to the employees. Uh, and, uh, you know during their time in 2012 or 2014 this was the email like you know if you see this email hi everyone our employee satisfaction survey says 91% enjoy working here 91 that that's a great number considering the contest and the you know uh, the reality and 4% they don't so now what she is saying this go this is of course not satisfactory and we want to fix it we want to focus on that 4 percentage and if you are one of those four uh, unhappy percentage, please do contact us and we, we, we are there to help and uh, nothing else. Simple. And this approach made them and they have seen the ev clear evidently that in the next quarter it, it improved from 91 to 94. I, I don't think this will happen on a regular basis in any, any of the companies or most of the companies. Some companies might be doing that. No, no doubt about that. That's why they are performing uh, high in the market. But most of the companies fail to do this kind of uh, culture. Okay, so that is how the the, the, the they brought in the you know uh, motivation level and they, they try to focus on what is where we are lagging and how to improve. The constant uh, you know motive on uh, uh, improving make them to be a market leaders. Okay. That's about the squad, okay, at the ground level, or, or the squad is the minimum uh, small team, smallest team, which is cross-functional and they deliver the product independently, okay. Tribes is a multiple uh, squads, they become a tribe. And simple analogy for the safe fans over here, I'll say, in, in safe scale agile framework, we have, uh, you know, scrum team, ART, right, similar way, scrum team is equal to squad. And then some companies they will call it as a pods. In my company they will call it as a pods. As a squad is equal to pod, equal to scrum team. Okay, and these multiple squads will become tribe. So tribe is what a combination of a squads. They work on the in in one tribe you you can have 
no client application uh, teams working on back end teams front end teams okay so based on their you know uh, domain or based upon the uh, type of work they are working the squads are uh, formed and overall as is as is uh, tribe what is the effective value we are delivering to the uh, customer they call it as a tribe it is a light weighted matrix and the primary dimension is focused on product delivery and quality okay and guild so guild is again it's like a community of practice or you know center of excellence or you name it but it's a wider community it's it's across the tribes it's across the uh, in say for if you say the arts it's, it's across the you know uh, different bu units inside the organization if you to consider a big organization so this this gives the opportunity to to be on same page to discuss and it's 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 very uh, what you called self nominated thing you can uh, anytime join or you can anytime leave leave guild guild may be uh, uh, formed may, may be on the specific area or specific knowledge okay so this guild plays an important role in in uh, keeping the things or uh, uh, on the technology updated on the skills updated these are the places where you go and know what's happening in in our world in our domain in our area okay and this is the favorite part the chapter like if you see if you see in our traditional or waterfall way of working obviously with the pros and cons uh, 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 definitely protocol and pro, uh, uh, traditional project management has got some pros and cons obviously that is why it it, it, it has sustained for that long and based on the cons uh, the the agile world born out in 20, 2001 no doubt about it they formed the some 20 engineers uh, they met and they formed four values some to, uh, 10 principles to then after that how about the pros of the project management or a traditional waterfall project management what about the pros like you know one of the pros is uh, they are working working in silos like uh, they are working in uh, skilled based teams or you know um, domain based teams they, obviously the, it has got some uh, uh, pros and cons pros is they will exchange the uh, knowledge area very easily among themselves but cons is they cannot be cross functional or they cannot deliver the value that's where agile comes into the picture and often we forget about the pro of this one like you know uh, common skill sharing uh, that opportunity that's where chapter comes into the picture that is the beauty of the chapter and that i predominantly as agile coach saw it in uh, in the spotify model but in sap or it in scrum they they talk about it but they don't have some mechanism to uh, you know we stand that one or keep that one so the chapter is a place where you have a uh, uh, no, common skilled or common domain based chapter within the tribe okay and uh, uh, without switching your uh, uh, manager you can switch between the uh, squads and again in the chapter Uh, is uh, held by the chapter lead and who is the line manager or who is your manager again okay he will not see your work directly but again he will be tied with you with in terms of your skills upgradation latest happening in the in the in the domain in the in the in the in your area okay so if you see here that's what the chapters are formed and for example uh, we have a, a, a no squads with the uh, web application team in every web application squad we have web application engineer or uh, some devops engineer so each devops engineer is tagged with each other and they are headed by the ch- their manager who is a De- devops manager okay this just an example i am taking and they can easily share what's happening in their squads and if they come to any complex situation which cannot be solved by himself on the devops front he can reach his uh, other squad uh, uh, devops engineers saying they have a weekly or biweekly call 
and they will regroup and they will discuss on what's happening, where they are lacking, where they are heading, what is their improvement area, what is their focus area, where they are aiming for on skills, skills front, uh, where they want to move. This was hugely lacking in the other frameworks uh, as per my experience and this was there in our traditional project management and that's where the chapter comes into the picture. Okay. And again, like, you know, uh, uh, our uh, uh, other scaling agile uh, frameworks and methodologies uh, say about uh, small and frequent release. Okay, here also in Spotify model, they stress upon the small and frequent releases. The, the goal is what will what is the advantage of uh, small and frequent release? They don't do the big bang approach and they don't dump the code at, uh, all of a uh, sudden at one, which will again a huge risk for the application of the solution. They will go it in uh, you know small and uh, uh, you know frequent releases and whenever we have we have seen in uh, in enough uh, in traditional way of working like you know whenever there is a market launch whenever there is a big release everybody is gearing up everybody you know doing hangama and drama so all these sort of things will uh, uh, you know reduce if you have a small and very frequent release you don't have very uh, pressure situation on the milestones on the big line milestones on big launches or big release is happening i've seen in the aerospace industry they'll go for big big releases like you know uh blue label release black label release or you know uh these label releases they, they they take it very seriously and most of the teams are stressed by themselves okay any anything uh here and there that will impact the delivery so though to avoid those pressurized situation you always prefer for small and frequent releases okay and again, it's subjected to the uh, context, uh, context, their context. Okay, so in in uh, in other frameworks, uh, again with the safe, they have a agile release train. And they will be releasing uh, uh, the pro, you uh, know, their code in in packets or in small. Here also, they have the release trains. That uh, how our uh, normal trains they have scheduled time, scheduled arrival, scheduled departure. So you you get into train or not that doesn't matter it will go with, uh, on it uh, as per its schedule. Here also you have a code you can uh, look at the schedule and uh, put your code to the production in that rail or train or if not it will go schedule departure and arrival. Okay, so it's with the other multiple teams and here in this example A B C teams are ready and they kept uh, their code in on the wagon. But uh, D train also, they they are not fully partially ready. Uh, partially ready, they are they are partially ready. And whatever they are ready, they kept it onto the uh, production. And they have used, they might be using these future toggling met methods to hide from the uh, actual production environment. Okay. And then in the next train, they'll be again, uh, 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 they'll be full fledged, uh, you know, adding the code along with the old code, along with the new code like EFG. So this is the regular uh, uh, schedule or sch uh, which uh, teams uh, or pot squads will have to uh, follow. If they have something ready, they look at the schedule and they will dump it or they will they will deploy the solution. That is the beauty of this release trains and future toggling. Okay, and as I said in 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 the previous uh, slide, they will celebrate the uh, failures. Okay. And then I often see, uh, you know, fail fast, fail fast. There is a game behind the fail fast. Fail fast, learn fast, improve fast. This is the sequence. Not only failing, what you have learned from that failure and what you have learned and how they, you have put them into the uh, action items and practice and then improved. That really matters. And we, we focus on failures because uh, for every failure, you will be one step closer to the success. If you agree or not, but some of, some of them are, might be successful in their first, first uh, uh, no, uh, attempt, which is okay. They might be lucky, but in our uh, knowledge work area where we need to work with brain, where you need to you know, do trial and error, where the innovation is there, I don't think uh, you will be successful in first attempt. So you should have this attitude of fail fast, learn fast, and improve fast. We have seen enough people, scrum masters and agile coaches or engineers and leadership, they always focus on fail fast, fail fast. What next after fail fast? Learn fast and then, you know, improve fast. Okay. 
and bring that uh, you know uh, uh, culture of fail fast fail uh, friendly environment and bring that psychological safety into the pods and teams and then it's it's not about who with uh, because of uh, which person that uh, failure is happened it's all about learning how did it happen how how we can avoid it uh, what we can do better on on top of that okay yeah and as i said we have seen in in earlier slide that their walls are uh, you know all the white boards they will they will uh, uh, you know capture this on that wall you know, whenever you see that you will try to learn you get motivated and you know uh, you know you try to bring those uh, lessons learned into the current work what they are doing that is the culture they brought in and they 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 do celebrate failures uh, like you know i think in uh, one of the slide they do have a friday uh, evening parties they celebrate failures okay i i like most of us we strongly believe work hard party hard they 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 believe in you know celebrate failures and which yielded some results to them okay and uh, they openly shared their what has happened they openly you know um, uh, shared their journey which uh, helped others to learn Oh, from them you always learn from from your own uh, own journey and uh, from others uh, journey as well okay and not only celebrating it they will do proper post mortem for that what happened where did we go wrong what are the process we have followed because of the process failure because of the technology failure because of the lack of skill failure because of the other reasons what what it really happened and they try to grill down and then come to some consensusness and they will take some action points and put those action points into the squads or tribes backlog okay not this they acknowledge it they turn it into the action items they feed that uh, you know uh, action items into the backlog that's where when you keep something in backlog in in uh, some or other iteration they'll come into the iteration backlog and teams start working on them okay to uh, to mitigate that okay and and if you see here the interesting statement here the ticket is not closed when when the problem is solved it is really closed when they capture the learnings to avoid the same problem in the future we literally fail on this point most of the organizations we have incident management service na portal okay it may not apply applicable for every ticket but but there are potential some tickets of some incidents where we need to investigate what it happened or some some high critical failures how why did it happen how it happened what we can do we need to investigate and capture the learning uh, uh, the uh, learnings or findings there and then close the ticket so that will give the again the, a record of what is happened and then whenever uh, we came out uh, across the situation like in the you know in in the in the uh, uh, future uh, scenarios they can easily correlate or look at that and get back you uh, know retrieve the information okay this continuous improvement uh, like everybody uh, focused on it driven from below and supported from above this continuous improvement I, we often see leaders will come and stress upon we should continuously evolve continuously improve okay this retrospection as i said most of the uh, teams or most of the uh, scrum teams or squads or squads they do for a name sake and they fail to bring that uh, retrospection action item into the backlog so the, the squads have retrospect in every few few weeks to talk about what went well and what uh, uh, to improve next and this this continuous improvement approach should, should be uh, both sides from the bottom and the, from the top from the bottom means from the uh, uh, squads point of view and the top is from the leadership point of view so uh, squads will identify what needs to be improved tribes are the uh, next level leadership they will support or they will help you to uh, in, in in the form of uh, you know resources in the form of support in the form of you know motivation the, the c level or the leadership will support so it is driven from both sides from the top and bottom okay and as 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 you know for every team to be a successful for every team to be a psychological safe for every team to be an high performing team 
trust uh, is the base no matter uh, whatever parameters you talk trust will be a top on top of everything if you have trust you'll have better collaboration better communication uh, psychological safety in the uh, uh, squads and more openness more willingness all these uh, parameters are very much linked to the trust here trust plays more important role rather than control again in agile world there is no point about control it's all about service leadership and agile at scale requires trust at scale so trust this is an interesting statement trust at the squad level uh, is important and that uh, just now we have discussed like the, for all the parameters is important at the next level also the trust should be scalable and next level also trust on the leadership trust on the organization trust of the on your manager trust on uh, you know the next level of leadership should be there then only an overall organization uh, have uh, better uh, performance or better delivery and they can sustain in the market okay and there is no fear and no politics this is how uh, they, they explicitly call out okay no politics no fear and that's an, a very important thing uh, for for the teams and it's not that easy it's like you know now i'm saying just you know uh, no fear no politics yes we agree but uh, when we come to the reality and practicality it, it plays uh, an, a complex uh, 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 you know, situation where uh, scrum master or agile coach or leaders everybody in the team uh, need to uh, deal with it and it's a ground reality and it's it, it evolves over a period of time now we kept one session we talk about trust we talk about servant leadership now we cannot assume that a trust is established and servant leadership is uh, you know evolved okay and i said fail first learn first improve first i think we have spoke you know from the in earlier slide so there is no culture like uh, identify somebody and put them behind bars or blame game that's that's uh, uh, you know very danger and spotify very much acknowledges that yes failure has happened what matters is how fast we are recovered from that failure matters okay rather than fa uh, avoiding the failure okay and always uh, with this type of culture uh, spotify is known for its culture known for its autonomy known for the uh, these parameters with that parameters obviously you focus more on innovation rather than predictability like you know unlike our uh, traditional or waterfall project management milestones uh, you know we, like predict 100% uh, uh, clarity on the scope schedule uh, sct scope past times uh, all the plans rigid plans 100% we cannot predict in the in the innovative world or knowledge area world okay so you focus on innovation that will give the uh, more uh, value del delivery to the customer rather than plan fulfillment okay and this is one of the important uh, uh, point where spotify brought this culture and like i'm sure now most of the organization they are doing hackathons gamathons okay spotify uh, were the one of the pointers in bringing them in, in, in early in the game in 2012 uh, so, so they they focused on the uh, hack time and uh, uh, they believe that people are natural innovators and then they will they strongly believe necessity is the mother of invention and as I and said demo plays party on Friday so for the demos and the failures they will celebrate and they 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 you know uh, while while they have worked on the product they have uh, deployed in the production. They have tested enough and they go live and they gave the demo to the customer and they celebrate that success likewise the failures as well okay and this is one of the one of the uh, parameter of the culture the experiment friendly culture you always have data driven decisions rather than option driven or ego driven or authority driven okay so as agile coach as scrum masters or whoever in that uh, 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 squads or tribes they will constantly look for data to take some decision rather than person is taking the decision okay and you always have options a or b let's try both a and b and then see which is working better what's the hypothesis what we have learned what we can try next with this hypothesis learning so you always have the 
a better approach not single single point approach rather than uh, no set based approach so that when something one solution is completely uh, uh, failed you have some backup when you when you go with only one option then uh, you will not sustain in the market this is another culture where boot camp storytelling they, they quite often have these sessions where you know they share the uh, success stories failure stories you see in the top picture one person is you know uh, you know sharing his experience and uh, that's where storytelling happens his journey what what is his inferences what he have learned and what he have gained and uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. the boot camps are the place where you you send people in batches and then teach the uh, subject or the skill let it be scrum master let it be product owner let it be agile coach let it be devops engineer they not only learn the theory like i have like i am walking the slides they not only do that they will give the exercises the proper definition of the boot camp is they learn by the uh, you know uh, experience from the others and some interactive learning happens in the form of breakout rooms in the form of uh, activities in the form of exercises they 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 try to simulate the environment and learn rather than uh, just uh, looking at the video or looking at the youtube video or wiki page or you know textbook or whatever they try to learn the from each other with the interactive learning they they'll give they, they may not 100% simulate but they'll try to simulate the environment and they will do the exercises that's the power of learning in 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 a next level uh, here with the boot camps okay and this is very much from our uh, you know manufacturing world the in the toyota improvement area toyota production system they they have this board in the in the manufacturing uh, uh, warehouses uh, they have walls and they have the places they they keep this these kind of things uh, as i already told in earlier slide they have the white walls they they will keep this they will identify what is the problem what is the uh, no uh, next uh, target what is the definition of awesome and they they will be tracking it okay these exercises they will do with the uh, uh, squads and they will keep on the walls okay just to remind them and uh, focus on them to the uh, squad members okay it's the spotify as i said it's all about uh, culture that's where spotify model they have success uh, successfully implemented and they they got a good amount of you know market returns okay and uh, you are very much part of that culture whoever in that uh, you know model uh, if i was there or you will be there it starts with you you are the culture and model the behavior you want to see okay that's about spotify and a little bit go a little past here so these are the benefits like you know we have i think we have covered uh, while i was covering the slides earlier slide they improved collaboration and communication between the teams and they have uh, uh, successfully scaled the, so now after implementing this scrum with some some teams this is an obviously opportunity to implement for the larger teams and they when the organizations uh, big organizations and enterprises they work on the solutions you don't uh, suffice with the three to four teams definitely you need to scale it so with the spotify model they could able to successfully uh, scale that and uh, yield the results and uh, adaptable to different teams and as i, as I said uh, uh, squad is empowered enough to pick this scrum work rather than only following the scrum work kanban okay and obviously they encourages the experimentation and innovation they celebrate the failures and they greater visibility to project progress and team pro, uh, performance uh, and they increase the autonomy we have quite uh, discussed detail on that what is autonomy accountability motivation and more frequent releases and faster uh, response to the customer feedback these are the uh, one of the ing uh, company they have uh, implemented and they have successfully increased the 30% faster to market and 19.2% uh, uh, employee satisfaction and the other parameters so i'll give you this link in the chat uh, you can there are few beautiful videos whatever i told in last 50 minutes if you see this video okay you don't have link right okay i'll send the links give me a second so i am try to cover the gist of the spotify model okay these two videos in uh, typing youtube spotify engineering culture part 1 spotify culture uh, engineering part 2 
okay you type one vid uh, uh, video you will automatically redirect it to direct it to part 2 so you have 13 13 minutes uh, uh, videos total 20 minutes video so fantastic video whatever i discussed they discussed in next level and with that you will get fair understanding about the spotify model okay and uh, there are other blocks uh, where you can uh, see how they have implemented that's about the <clears throat> spotify model and i hope we are on time 11 24 okay more six minutes to take questions let me look at the questions may i may not cover all the questions but i will try to see yeah there's one question where uh, ravikant says mm -hmm. is it possible uh, scrum master can work in multiple squads yes yes absolutely yes that's a that's the reality in the ground many companies for one scrum master they are giving two teams uh, maximum three teams but ideally two teams scrum master for a uh, squad if it established just now scrum master should be full-time role until until they get some momentum and they start delivering some uh, value then uh, you, you can uh, the scrum master is entitled to take another uh, team it's purely depends upon uh, tuckman's ladders team formation forming norming or oh, sorry forming storming norming right performing and adjustment forming and uh, norming these are storming the first two stages where scrum master plays a crucial role and again scrum master wears a different hat right facilitator mentor teacher you know in, uh, what you call coaching Right, he needs to wait, uh, uh, wear a hat depending upon the context of the teams where they are now forming or norming or storming. Okay. And, uh, there's another question uh, mm -hmm. from Krishna Kishore How to apply this model in a highly regulated industry? Good question. Uh, as I'm working in one of the highly regulated environment uh, bank, so they are imp see everywhere they take some inspiration in our organization also they took inspiration from the spotify they are very much successful in uh, you know working on the spotify model so as agile principle says uh, 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 working software over documentation they are saying over they are not saying no okay there should be minimal documentation these regularities are you know, uh, meeting some compliances comes as a very much essential. And Agile is not saying don't use the documentation. He is saying working software or working product over uh, documentation. And this uh, uh, very much Spotify model can be very much used in highly regulated environments. Okay. Hope it's been answered. Uh, any other questions from that? panel or from the attendees i uh, i see one one uh, would you uh, quote some examples please by bharat pedirachu so spotify itself a great example and spotify they did uh, with their approach what it they do is it's a one of the unique uh, point uh, which I, I thought of covering but good good uh, that you have asked so now the music app is uh, very much fine-tuned as per the customer requirements okay like the playlist or you know by liking it you'll get uh, uh, songs after your playlist after your like list is uh, done they are they use ai ai techniques and they uh, you know continue suggesting the new songs okay and depending upon the clients and depending upon the audience they could able to successfully uh, uh, from the applications so they have made client to specific music application that's one of the successful stories for the spotify okay they they have the large uh, volume of music and then they they curated as per the client needs they have client specific versions of the music applications you see they have specific version for the specific client that's the where the next level they went and that in 2014 2015 itself not now Okay. Okay. Any any mm -hmm. more questions? As I said, uh, look at uh, those two videos. Uh, you get more details on the culture front, 
autonomy front and you know uh, other aspects of the spotify model and uh, they, they still now hendrik uh, is not acknowledging that this is a you know framework or methodology it's a model okay they have used in particular way and they have successfully and you can see a lot of videos in the youtube on uh, the case studies also you have a lot of case studies in the youtube with the spotify model case studies you can look at them okay so with that i would go forward any more questions before i uh, conclude or if i show the other part okay so the next session is by our very own ex president venkat reddy chirla uh, safe pa planning it's a tentative topic most mostly we will be doing that which is on 27th may on the same time 10:30 am to 11:30 am ist on saturday and uh, as uh, in the beginning we said we will come up with uh, more topics where mature topics i would say and uh, uh, good agile coaches and we'll try to give more uh, you know knowledge on the agile front and as we have attended this uh, okay that's a pd so this okay, is the right. workshops for the from the chapter from the hyderabad pmi people city chapter from our chapter pmp workshop from april you know 22 23 29 30 may 13 14 2021 20, acp workshop uh, from may 20 21 22 and da discipline agile senior scrum master uh, workshop is uh, from april 18 to uh, 21 okay for more information on the workshop please do reach out to uh, our academic director sheshu lenti or in type in telegram chat we will get back to you and as you have attended uh, this session you will get one pdu on the way of working uh, front this is the code please note down uh, since we have not collected pma ids this time uh, we will uh, you should self claim the uh, pdu i am texting this uh, pdu in the chat okay and uh, from subsequent event we will collect the pdus as well and then uh, it will be uh, auto credited okay and for any more questions on this uh, topic and the other uh, agile series if somebody agile coach who are interested please do uh, reach out to me uh, we can have discussion discuss that and look for the opportunity for the upcoming agile series session and th i thank you for our board members who patiently listen to this webinar and thank you all the members pmi members and non pmi members for taking out on the uh, saturday morning to learn something on agile friend hope it was fruitful and successful and i'll i'll hand out to you gopal yes uh, thank you vinay uh, thank you for the wonderful session and uh, one more thing uh, please let us know uh, what topics do you want to hear in agile series this agile is one of the biggest uh, topic that is happening right now uh, and uh, slowly it was supposed to be it industry but now all the other domains and even manufacturing now moving towards agile so it it became a huge ocean on its own so please let us know uh, what uh topics do you want to hear in terms of uh, agile uh in any of the social channels we have uh, either in telegram or with the uh, linkedin any other social channels uh, using hashtag agile series uh, and uh, topic so we will get back to you with those topics uh, and find out the eminent speakers on that and uh, give you uh, our members a good session on that so and right now i can see agile in bpos scrum or agile uh, those are the couple of things yes uh, thank you vinay and uh, <coughs> right uh, any that with that we are at the end of our uh, session now thank you all for joining on a saturday morning hope you had a wonderful session uh, you learned something from this session and uh, hope you can use these techniques uh, in your work regular work thank you again uh, have a nice weekend have a nice day uh,
uh, and uh, see you back soon in the next month in the Agile series. And also we have a network meeting and uh, knowledge sharing sessions coming up in the, from next month onwards. Uh, please keep an eye on our uh, social channels to learn more about uh, what other uh, events and webinars we are bringing up on a daily basis to help our members. So if you are not following our social channels, please follow them. It's PMI PCC on LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Telegram. We have one in Telegram. We have one in uh, uh, so all the social channels, let me know if you don't uh, uh, let us know if you can't find them, uh, we'll help you out. With that, we will end this session right now. Thank you. Thank you all and please do reach out to me if you have any questions on Agile topics and the current topic spot for model. Please do feel free to reach me on Telegram or WhatsApp. Thank you and have a good rest of the day and weekend. Bye-bye.